see a reed shaken in the wind a prophet I say unto thee much more than a prophet <laughs> this is he who was prophesied he came unto his own and his own received him not but as many as received him gave he them the power to become the sons of God look unto me and be thou saved tonight for I am real my word is true be not faithless but be believing and look unto me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I love that. Even the Lord. Hallelujah. It's all about to get me. this week uh, in the, in the field this week and we do walk through the and some are in that valley right now of the shadow of death it hits us all for it's appointed on the man who wants to die amen after that the judgment and so this week we have been kind of in, in, under that shadow of the, of the, the valley of death it touches lives. You cannot escape it. It's going, to, it's going to touch you somewhere in your immediate family. or someone loved one around you. It's going to touch you to be in that valley, the shadow of death. I know, I'll forget when I was a young minister and I was going to Sister Betty Quake Moses Church. I was a young minister in that church. And one of the brothers there in our church and his wife, his mother had died. <clears throat> It's about Chad Ziegelmar, and some of you know about Chad and Sister Lou. And uh, little Chad's brother was there, and I don't know where he stood with the Lord. I'd never seen him, uh, you know, uh, in conversion or whatever. I don't know. He, he might have been saved. Uh, pretty good fellow. I know that. I know for years. But anyhow, the whole family was tore up because they were in the valley shed that it was their mother. Now, I'll never forget about Chad Ziegelmar sitting back there. And that was his mother laying up in state too. And he went around laying hands on his brothers and sisters and prayed for them. Hallelujah. As a young minister, that touched me so much. Because they were all going through the same thing. But he had something they didn't have. Amen. He had the power to stand in the valley of the shadow of death. Amen. He knew where he was. He knew, definitely knew where his mother stood because she'd been a good old Christian all of her life. And there he was trying to comfort his brother with what he had. See, it's the difference. It's the difference. We're coming down in the age of time where the rubber meets the road, ladies yes. and gentlemen. Amen. We're going to find out just what you're made of in the next few years, whether you really are built to stand or not. Amen. Hallelujah. It's going to take more than shaking hands with a preacher. Amen. It's going to take more than just saying I, I was saved one time for I gave my life to Christ. Take more than a profession. It's going to take something down on the inside. A personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. 
that'll stand even in the valley of the shadow of death. That'll stand even when the death angel comes. Hey, that'll stand against all the wicked forces of the earth. Hallelujah. And I believe they're beginning to pour themselves out upon the earth today. And, and if you're not careful, you'll be lost. You'll be caught up in that. Uh, there's things going on in this world I never thought I'd see. That's right. Daily almost I see things I never thought I'd see. Oh, they had, had that over in communist Russia. Or they had that over in Europe. Guess what? It's right here. It's in our government. Yeah, socialism has come to our land. It's been exalted. The taking over of businesses. Oh yeah, the government's just taking it over. They don't have to get them to vote on a bill anymore. They just decide to pass it. They just pass it. They count it pass. Whether you like it or not. 80% of American people don't want it. Or they can't dare to do it anyhow. That's, that's the way it happens. And one day, Mike proclaimed himself to be dictator. You don't know, folks. I can remember as a young man, I'm 69 years old. They called Fidel Castro the George Washington of Cuba. He was a liberator. He was revered by all the countries of the world. He was going to set those Cubans free. They brought him to the United States. He was on the early talk shows back in those days. Jack Parr and some of the earlier talk shows. I can remember just like yesterday. I was just a young man. And he was on there, kind of like he would be with Johnny Carson today. Oh, they they marvel and they revered. They all loved him. A lot of them still do. But one day they woke up and realized he was a communist. Too late, he already had control of the country. They woke up and realized he was under a dictatorship. Well, I got a feeling that we're on the edge of that right now. I got a feeling. I see things going on I was never saw in my life before. I've seen the Congress vote on things for months and months and months of time trying to trying to pass something. Now they don't do that at all. They just bring in the secretary and he, and, and he, he uh, executes an executive order and it's done. Don't have to don't have to vote on it anymore. Then where they don't even need the Congress anymore. See, there's supposed to be separation of powers. So the one person can't have too much power. If the Congress gets too powerful, they'll come out against them. If the judiciary gets too powerful, they come out against them. If the president gets too much power, they all stand against him. Now nobody's standing against him. And he'll say one thing while they're all doing something else. You say, well, I didn't do it, they did it. He's in charge. Did I get your eyes open? That's what we talked about for years and years. It's here. It's right under our nose. And nobody's raised any voices about it. I tell you what's amazed me. Uh, you, you, if you watch Fox News, you've seen this. Where they keep it playing this uh, new Black Panthers speech about uh, he hates white people. I hate white people, he said. I hate all white people. All cracker white, crack white crackers, he said. I think we're going to have to kill, if we're going to, before we can have our freedom, we're going to have to kill some crackers. And we're going to have to kill their babies. How many of you have heard that on TV? You know why? If you don't watch Fox News, you won't see that. They ain't even showing it on CBS, NBC. You know what they're showing? Mel Gibson's tirade against his wife. Yeah. Day after day after day yeah. on the phone. Who cares about Mel Gibson? <laughs> These black pensioners are saying they're going to kill all white people and their babies. And the mainstream media won't even show it. It's like it never happened. I hate to tell you, but they're all in collusion, folks. In all the mainstream, the big newspapers, you won't really find it in there. No. And they're trying to shut all the conservatives up so they can so they can't hear these things. And they're telling people, don't watch uh, don't watch Fox News. They're coming right out, don't watch Glenn Beck. 
Them's the only people telling the truth, folks. They want to shut them up. I generally don't preach political things like this, but I'm telling you, if somebody don't get alarmed, we're going to wake up, tied up, tangled up, Come on. in a communist government. And the mainstream media, they're not reporting any of it. We had a big uh, problem down there in the Gulf. Now we all knew that eventually they'd get that plug. People, if you could put a man on the moon, you could surely plug a hole in the ocean floor. That's right. Amen. It's true. They didn't want to plug it. Well, 84 days. 84 days. It was 51 days before the president even acknowledged that they had a problem down there. Yeah. They want to make sure you got plenty of oil out there. Got to have a crisis. Got to have some. Oh, we got to do this. We got to do it now. The whole world's going to be destroyed. Now, it ain't going to be destroyed. A couple years time, they'll have it all cleaned up and forgot about it. Be all forgot about it. That ain't the first oil spill they ever had. No. I remember that out, uh, Valdez thing that happened. They said it'd take 100 years. Within 10 years, it was all cleaned up. They got to have turmoil. They got to have something that's, you know, yeah, it's drama. It's a, so they can get these things through. They passed several bills that nobody had ever read. They didn't even, now they're beginning to find out what's in the hospital bill. The yeah. health yeah. bill, find out. Oh my God. Yeah. And the president stood up and he swore, I swear to you that there's not going to be any federal funding for abortion. No. Well, they got word this week they've already started in New Mexico and two of the other states. Set up by the federal government, they are funding abortion. He lied. He's a liar. He's a liar. All the way down the line, he says one thing, does something else. Then blame it on somebody else. Bush did it. Yeah. Yeah. Bush did it. My God Almighty. That's the best. Lord, we're in a sad situation. Help us, Lord. I'm sure glad we got a Savior. Amen. He's going to take care of us, folks. Yes, Don't you ever doubt that. We're in good hands. Yeah, now we're in good hands. I'm not talking about all state either. I'm talking where we're in good hands. He said, no man can pluck you out of my hand. We're in good hands tonight. Hallelujah. He's in control. I don't know what's all going to happen, but I know one thing. I'm his child and he's my God and I'm going to be all right. So keep your eyes upon Jesus. Stay in tune with him. Hallelujah. Amen. It'd be wise to keep your eyes and ears open. But I'll tell you, all them, all them stations that are refusing to report the truth, you ought to shut them off. Turn on Fox News. They're telling the truth. I'm telling you. Amen. They're telling the truth. They're the only ones that are. And you know who they're trying to destroy? Fox News. But one man say not only they're not really a news organization. They're the only news organization right now. They're telling the truth. And they're trying to destroy them. They're trying to stop them. They're trying to figure out how to stop them. They're trying to get Rush Limbaugh off the radio. And they've, they've had been several of those uh, communistic type uh, uh, radio stations and they can't they can't stay on the air because they can't nobody nobody listens to them and now that the government they want the government to fund it for them now they see of course that's the way it is they want the government to fund everything with your grandchildren and great grandchildren's money they won't take that <laughs> well you see I'm full tonight <laughs> It has absolutely nothing to do with what I'm going to preach. Well, that's good, though. We need to know it. But sometimes you just got to blow. You just got to let it out. We're in the, we've got people in our government. I'm not talking about one or two. I'm talking about a lot of them. That are radical, Marxist, communist, radicals in high places in our government. Never thought I'd say it like it is today. But that can be taken care of too. God can take care of all that. People are beginning to fight back now. People are starting to fight back. They, they had the same thing back in, in the early part of the century. 
they almost, well, in fact, some encouraged uh, Roosevelt to declare himself king. And that, that's why they got a term limits for presidents that can only serve two terms. He served four terms. And he was right on the verge of just taking control of everything and, and doing away with all the other, other parts of the government and declared himself king. If you don't think so, you need to get your history books and read it. It's the truth. They were taking control of the banks. They were taking control of the businesses. Whew. My God. And it's just a return to that. But the people woke up back then and they're, they're waking up now. They're beginning to wake up now. I never doubted they'd get the leak fixed. I thought they would. And if they'd have had people up there taking care of the cleaning up, they wouldn't be anything on the shores right now. They'd have had it all cleaned up. And they, they had to, they had ships that could come in there and and and, and uh, take care of hundreds of thousands of uh, barrels of oil a day and they wouldn't even let them come in. I'm talking about the president. Amen. Wouldn't let him come in. Had the weather got so bad, so it'd be on all the newspapers, and he. But it's just backfired on him. See, dumb. They know what's going on. People are well read. They know more about what's going on than he does. While he's playing basketball and playing golf. Preaching, bro. It's the truth, my God. And of course, he's saying things like that. You're racist. The Lord knows I'm not. I was raised on a black man's lap. I'm definitely not raised. And it's, uh, it's, uh, oh, Jesus. We have a president that has never run a business, <clears throat> would know what it is to make a payroll, has lived off of the government all of his adult life, and one way or another has taken people money from other people. That's how he's made his living. Would know what it is to go out and have to pay for a light bill would not even know what it is. So he has no empathy for you. He doesn't understand what, what you go through. It's sad to say, but it's the truth. Has no management ability whatsoever. Of course, I know every man on lemonade stand. <laughs> now you talk about sales, but I used to sell ice water to the guys who worked at the brickyard. Now if you sell ice water, you're doing pretty good. A ten guy loaded brick out there on that brick yard about the middle of the afternoon. I'd go to a bunch of jugs of ice water and they bought it too. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sometimes if I was doing real good, I'd make a little Kool-Aid or something, but most times just ice water. I want to read to you the 37th chapter. <laughs> Part of the service just goes right along with what uh, with this narrative. I heard somebody uh, talking about this some during the revival. I don't remember who or how what come out. But anyhow, this is what the Lord dealt with me about today. It's a real narrative towards the people of God. What chapter, brother? 37th chapter. You'll recognize it right away. Oh, yes. It's the Valley of Dry Bones. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> It's a great chapter. Yes. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about and behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. Very dry. When I come in tonight, I looked out over the crowd and I thought, Lord, these people are very dry. <laughs> That's brother. When we prayed, it was kind of quiet. Yes, it was it kind of dry. Even the singing, I saw a lot of people just looking. And some were just kind of murmuring. And then there was a few that were singing. But they were very dry. Where do you get a picture of this? And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord, thou, God, thou knowest. So you think these bones can live? Said, Lord, I, I don't know. You know. I don't. If you only knew the times that I stand in the pulpit here and look out over the crowd, and sometimes it's, it's, been, it's been a tough week for some of you, and I know it has been for some of you, and I know that some of you came to revival when it was a real struggle just to get here, you know, even as much as you did, and some were here about every night, 
Not all, and that's the way that is. Of course, when you set out, you're going to you're going to be faithful, and the devil say, well, "We'll see about that." And he begins to to work just to make sure he can, you know, short circuit that deal. Yeah, right on me tonight. And there are sometimes you just can't. We understand that we're not stupid. We we're, we're grown ups. We understand. But for the most part, people were very faithful. They were here. Yes, they were. And even those who couldn't be here every night, they did a lot of things during the day to keep things going, and they did a lot of personal things. And we appreciate everything that you did towards the revival, even your prayers, whatever, it, because we work as a body. We are a body. Yes, right. Amen. We are a body. We can't always be there, possibly in person, but we can be there in spirit, in mind, even in our attitude, in the way that we carry ourselves. We can all have a part. Can you say amen? amen? And that's what makes it work. And many times I look out over the congregation and I can hear the Lord in the Spirit say, Can these bones live? And I say, Lord, thou knowest. Now, I used to, before I had my surgery on my eyes, I used to take my glasses off. But I couldn't see past the second or third row with my glasses off. But since I got my eyes fixed, it don't work. I have to close my eyes. Because I can see Tony very well back there right now. Even his little smile and whatever he does, I can see it. So that don't work. But a lot of years he did work. But when I had my cataract taken off, they put new lenses in there and that took care of that. I didn't have that, that uh, weapon anymore. Main reason I wear the glasses is I'm blind in my left eye, and my doctor told me, said, you ought to wear glasses anyhow, if nothing else, to protect that other eye. Because if you'd lose that eye, you'd be in trouble. So that, that's the main reason. And then, of course, to read. I have to use them to read. Before, I didn't have to use them to read. Yeah, you do. I can see very well. Now it's just a big blur to me. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> it's a trade-off. I found out life is a trade-off. To get this, you've got to give up this. <laughs> always going to have to give up something now boys you might as well face it and girls too that's the way life is yep. if you want this you're going to have to give up this yes, sir. and to serve the Lord and to please Him and to get in the Word of God there's some things you just got to give up and nobody's going to make you the preacher ain't going to come around look in your window see what you're doing <laughs> or see who's listening or see what kind of show you're watching on TV I lived in a day and age when they did those things. Okay. Yes, we did. They'd drive around and check see whose car. I noticed so and so's car at your house last night. Still do. See who you're entertaining. We we don't do that anymore. You answer to the Lord. That's all you got to answer to. Oh, yeah. And that's enough. Mm -hmm. That's enough to answer to the Lord. I guarantee enough, you that. That's that's but I can't put you nowhere. But He can. He has the power. Amen to put you wherever you need to be. Or wherever he wants you to be. Hallelujah. I think as I think about these things. Hallelujah. These bones were very, very dry. Sometimes we get very, very dry. There's not every time I step in the pulpit that I'm red hot. There's sometimes I'm kind of dry. And I've stepped in the pulpit many times and didn't really feel on a level enough to feed anybody. Not a lot of times, but it has happened. And the Lord's going to help me tonight. And I look out there and behold some of those like little birds with their little mouth on them. <laughs> feed me. Feed me. Feed me, Seymour. Is that movie is like, feed me, Seymour. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't feel like I got very much to feed. And I had to just close my eyes and kind of get lost in God and get, get out of my own flesh and enter into the spirit world. And as I do, God begins to speak through me. And even I marvel sometimes at the things that comes out of my mouth. It's not I that speaketh, but the He that liveth in me. Yeah. He speaketh in me. Yeah. Even Jesus said that as He walked the earth. Yes, He did. And God will speak to a cabbage head. Yeah. Uh -huh. I am living proof of that. <laughs> One time he spoke to a jackass. Yes, 
In fact, he spoke to a mini jacket. <laughs> Say it. Now the hands are going up. Got a couple of J's in the booth, in the house tonight. <laughs> so this is his salvation. It's not our salvation. It's his salvation. Amen. It's his gospel truth. It is forever. His word, he said, will stand forever. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will never pass away. Amen. You may think you'll escape his word. You get down to the end of the line, you'll find it right there to judge you. Yes. I, Paul, uh, John said, I saw the books that were open. Yes. What books do you think he saw? That I think he saw the 66 books of the Bible. Well, I think he saw. The books were open and we were judged out of those books. And there's a book of remembrance written for all of us. I heard an old preacher say one time, said, I really believe it's just like in that day that they'll just be like showing a movie and, and you'll see a picture of your life. I don't, I don't know, but that sounds pretty good to me. You know, everything that you thought you got by would come up, would come right up on the screen there. Oh, my. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. <clears throat> but that's why we're in church tonight. We don't want those saints to meet us there. Erased. Judgment is beginning at the house of God. Yeah, we're we're getting this thing out of the way. Hallelujah. When he calls us away, we're not going to stand in any judgment. No, sir. No, no. No, no you're not the saints who judge the world. We'll be on the right hand of God. And we'll be judging the world. If we've been found worthy to be caught away in that bride, we don't have to worry about no judgment. Amen. Our judgment is right here now today. Yes. You know, there's a lot of people who don't like to go to church because they don't want to hear what they're going to hear. Because the Word of God will find them. Amen. And they'll say, you're going to have to quit doing this. You're going to have to quit doing that. You're going to have to quit thinking them thoughts. You're going to have to live right. You're going to have to straighten your life out. You're going to have to repent. Right. Except you repent, you'll die. Yeah, don't tell me that voice hadn't spoken that to you. Everyone that's ever come into His presence, that voice has spoken Amen. that to you. Amen. And that's why we come together to get it all under the blood. Yes, yes absolutely. Oh, Amen. Covered by the blood of Christ. Yes. Now the old song says they're all blotted out by the blood of the Savior. All oh, blotted out by the blood of the Lamb. My sin were like a mountain. I took them to the fountain. Yes. Now they're all blotted out. Praise yes. God. Aren't you glad? Yes, amen. And daily we keep that we keep yes. that slate clean. Yes. He said if we'll confess our sins, yes. he's faithful to forgive our sins. Yes. So not only has our Adamic initial sin been forgiven, but our daily sins is forgiven. Yes. And our future sins is forgiven. Yes. It's all under the blood. Yes. All we got to do is confess it yes. and ask, yes. and He'll forgive. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Aren't you glad about that? Thank you, Lord. Oh, I used to worry about that because I'd fight and sin in my natural body, and one day I felt clean, the next day I didn't. And one day I was up, and the next day I was down. And the next day I was up, and I found out that's the way it goes. Up this hill and down. <laughs> up this hill again. Up this hill and down, up this hill again. It's a mighty, mighty long road, one that has no end. And that's the way it is. Right. We're up and down and up and down, up and down, up and down. But oh, one of these days, there's going to be a change made. Amen. going to be a change made. Amen. Right. Amen. That was his moral shall be made immortal. Hallelujah. We're going to put on immortality. Amen. We're going to put on the fullness of the knowledge of the Son of God. Could be like Him. Have a body like His glorious body without spot or a wrinkle or any such thing. Well, I cry for it. I long for it. My body cries out for it. My soul cries out for it. 
and I know in my heart that I'm going to have it. Yes. One day, hallelujah. For I'm longing for it. I'm crying for it, Lord. I've got to have it, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen to God. Hallelujah. So look at here. These, these bones are very, very dry. Uh -huh. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, Lord, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones. He used to sing a song. These bones, these bones gone. Walk around these bones, these bones gone. Walk around these bones, these bones gone. Walk around or hear the word of the Lord. Prophesy to these bones, these dry bones. Prophesy to these bones, these dry bones. Prophesy to these bones, these dry bones. Now hear the word of the Lord. Now the head bone connected to the neck bone, the neck bone connected to the shoulder bone, the shoulder bone connected to the back bone, the back bone connected to the hip bone, the hip bone connected to the thigh bone, the thigh bone connected to the knee bone, the knee bone connected to the leg bone, the leg bone connected to the ankle bone, the ankle bone connected to the foot bone. Now hear the word of the Lord. These bones, these bones gonna walk around. These bones, these bones gonna walk around. These bones, these bones gonna walk around. Now hear the word of the Lord. That's what the songs are about here. He's a prophesy to these bones. Yes. Sometimes, we say, oh, I feel so bad, I don't think I'm going to go to church. Dry bones. Dry bones, hallelujah. You need to get in the valley where there's some prophesying going on. Amen. He put it in the house of the Lord. Forsake not the assembling of yourself together as a man or some is, but the more so as you see the day approaching. Because they'll prophesy to you and life will come into these old bones. And even though you didn't feel like it, I'm glad I come tonight. Hallelujah. I'm glad I come. How many times? How many times we've said, Oh, I'm glad I come tonight. And how many times at home we said, I should have went. <laughs> Lay down on the couch, you can't sleep, toss and turn. Got a headache, feel bad. Wasn't nothing good on TV. Everything I looked at, find the whole evening's gone. So I, I give all this up and I should have went to church. That's the valley. That's in the valley. I heard a preacher say one time, children, I know the valley must be important. I've spent 75% of my Christian life there. The sweetest flowers grow in the valley. I'll get up to the mountaintop see what you see. A little snow. Uh -huh. Some little scraggly bushes if you're lucky. There ain't nothing living up there. <laughs> but down in that valley, that's where the water flows. That's where the green grass is. Hey, man, that's where the animals feed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Amen. You've got to understand, so we're in a process. Amen. We've got to yield ourselves to this process. Little Scott Bailey had a wonderful song called I'm Yielded to the Wind. I'm yielded to the wind. Some people still holding back. They haven't really yielded to the wind. I kind of like what I feel, but I haven't really surrendered to it all the way. Let me tell you something. When you really yield to it, it'll make you go when you don't feel like going. Amen. It'll push you on when you don't feel like you can go on. Amen. And of course you understand that serving God is more than feelings. Yes. It's more than feeling like it. I do it until the feeling comes back. Feelings come and go. Sometimes you feel like it, sometimes you don't. Just go ahead until the feeling comes back. That's what you do. That's what you do. I remember when Mark Tyson was fighting. I saw him at, on the news at 5 o'clock in the morning. And he was out jogging. And they had a newsman run along beside him with a mic. What are you doing with his training for the fight? Had a big fight. 
He wasn't laying in bed. Amen. He didn't have a big pile of uh, uh, junk and candy there. He trained him for the fight. He get ready for the battle. There's a trade-off. There's a, there's a time to eat the cashew nuts and the, and the ice cream and cake. But it ain't now. There's a battle on the known. Yeah, that's right. Feeling bad? Well, come on, you'll get feeling bad. Come on, just come on. I have never seen a time, hardly, when I was sick or well or whatever, that I didn't feel better. Maybe not tip top. I didn't feel better than I did before I went. Amen. And I'm always glad I did. Amen. See, we're all alike. We're all fighting the same battle. We all Absolutely. got the flesh to deal with. Sure yeah. We're all weak. Our old couch demons in. <laughs> you don't need to go tonight. They won't miss you. Nobody cares anything about it. Anyhow, see, he's told these same lies to everybody. He he no respect of persons either. He tells everybody that. They'll never miss you. We couldn't do this without you. You're a part of this body. Paul said, can the big toe say to the elbow, we have no need of thee? Can the elbow say to the little toe, we have no need of thee? Everybody has their place in the body. And it takes every one of them to make that body go like it should. I thought about this valley of dry bones. We find ourselves in these valleys. But when the Lord begins to speak and the power of God begins to take hold and strength begins to come, now all of a sudden, we begin to feel like it. Hallelujah. Now all of a sudden, we're kind of spurred on. And we want to be a part of it. Before you know, we're clapping our hands. Before you know, we're waving our arms. Before you know it, amen, all that spirit that fights us is lifted away from us. And we begin to draw strength from one another. That's what this is all about. Can you say amen? Amen. He said, Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a noise. <laughs> the Holy Ghost begins to move the noise a little bit of noise. So we would say, boy, it's noisy, people. When the wind begins to blow, the tree starts going like this. Yeah, they yeah. The wind bloweth where it listeth. Thou hearest the sound thereof. Canst not tell from whence it came. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. As the shaking begins to take place, they begin to feel something as the movement begins to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and, I, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Now sometimes we may not be quite in that state, but sometimes we're about as dead. About as dead as we can be, just barely hanging on. And it is hard to the press of life. There's a lot of pressure upon us. But if we'll push on, He'll put breath in our body. Absolutely. Amen. He'll put the joy in our heart. He'll give us a reason to sing. Put a new song in our heart. Give us a praise when we don't feel like praising. Amen. Hallelujah. And He said, And the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said He unto me, Prophesy in the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus said the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded. Now this is all, you know, in a vision. Commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, and exceeding great army. You know, devil might try to make you think you're small. One of us can chase a thousand. That's right. Two of us could put 10,000 to five. Amen. Amen. Hey, what could 50 or 60 of us do? That's right. We got more power than you think we got. Amen. Hallelujah. We got the Word of God at our disposal. 
We had the promises of God. They got the Holy Ghost. We had a five-fold ministry. We got nine gifts of the Spirit. Amen. We're not weak. He said, let the weak say, I am strong. strong. Amen. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Every one of us has passed through that valley. And we've had those kind of thoughts. Hallelujah. Therefore prophesy and send them. Thus said the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Now we're talking spiritual things here now. He's using a natural thing even to show us something spiritually, right? Uh -huh. We are spiritual Israel. Yes, we are. We've been grafted in to the family of God. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves. Amen. And brought you up out of your graves. And shall put my spirit in you and you shall live. And I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. The word of the Lord came again, saying unto me, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah, for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim. Ephraim. For all the house of Israel is his companions. We're all God's children. Amen. He's mindful of every one of us. Amen. He doesn't want to cast any of us off. We all got a part in this. Amen. And join them <laughs> one together into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children of Israel, thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not show us what you mean us by these? Say unto them, Thus said the Lord, God, behold, I'll take the stick of Joseph, which is the land of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with them, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand. There will be a time that we'll become one with the children of Israel. Amen. Yes, we will. With the natural body Amen. of Israel. We'll become one with them. And they'll recognize and realize that God has redeemed us too. Amen. Won't that be a wonderful time? Yes. I look forward to that. Yes. Okay. I told Brother Al back here, Brother Al is a convert, converted Jew. He was raised Jewish. And I, I've i always been in awe of the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. And when I lived on the south side of Indianapolis, a lot of Jews ran there. And, and I always sought them out. I always felt something special about these Jewish people. And it was because the blessing of the Lord is upon them. And He still loves them. Don't you understand that? Amen. He has not lost His love for the children of Israel. Amen. The natural children. He still loves them. And He's going to gather them together too. Amen. But we're grafted in now. We're part of that. I told a story about my daughter that worked for a Jew. And her husband had drove a semi off a mountain ended up in a, in a hospital in bad shape. And he had seizures. And I remember they sent him to a hospital in Memphis, Tennessee for seizures. And there she was working and trying to you know, work into the church. She was their minister of music. And they even got to where they lived in the church. And they had to give up their home. They lived in a church in a, like days and I in one of the Sunday school rooms. And she did a lot of work in the church. And there she was working at that little market. market. Isaacs, I think his name was Isaacs. That's a good name for Jew. Isaacs. And she talked to him about the Lord. And she told him. At first he was kind of afraid of her. But he thought she was one of them rabid Christians that didn't like Jews and so on and so forth. Oh no, she said, you don't understand. We're in all the Jewish people, and someday you're going to realize that I'm your sister. I'm being grafted in, see? We're, we're family. We belong together. And that's just, uh, he, he just couldn't quite fathom all this. Didn't quite understand all this. So, well, you just need to read the New Testament. You'll read that, you'll find, you'll see what I'm talking about. Well, so it happened, and financially, she was going down the tube. She lost her home. And there she was, trudging along, trying to, you know, trying to make a living for her family, keep her kids together. And one day she had her light bills laid out there by the phone. 
And he came up and he saw the light bill. What is this? He said. She said, well, they're going to shut the lights off and I was going to call the, the light company today and see if I get an extension on this or something. He said, well, I'll just take that. What do you mean? Well, he said, you convinced me that you are my sister and the Jewish people take care of their own. Don't you worry no more about that light bill. I'll take care of that light bill. Oh, she ran out and got on the phone call and she said, oh, daddy, daddy. She was just so excited. She said, it's not the money. It's just he really seen, really seen what I've been trying to tell him for weeks and weeks and months. He really does understand that spiritually I'm his sister. Hallelujah. Isn't that a wonderful thing? And one day many will see and will realize and understand that that Messiah, He really was the Messiah. He really did come for the sins of the world. He really did come to save whosoever will. Let Him come and take of the waters of life freely. I told her one time, in days, I said, Daisy, I've got some things i got to say. To my, to my daughter. And we drove to Tennessee. And she didn't even know for sure what I was going to say to her. I said, honey, i got to tell you something. i got to tell you something. Oh, she had a home. She has a dream home. Oh, she loved that home. She thought that was the greatest thing ever was. And I said, honey, listen. Let me tell you something. God's got homes out the wazoo. Getting you a home is no problem for God. He can give you a home that will beat this one out now. You all see the home she's in today. <laughs> and God just made it all possible. He just he made it in her lap. I mean, it's a beautiful home down in the woods in Tullahoma. It is a beautiful place. And the little church that they started, it was about this size when they started. That's a fellowship hall now. They built a church on the front of it. And it's full of people. And they're full of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> hey, let me tell you. But I, I told her, I said, I come all the way down here to tell you something. This is not the end. God's got something better for you. She had a little frame home out there. It was a nice home, but I mean, it wouldn't touch the home God gave her. I'm telling you what God can do. God knows what He's doing. And He knows how to give good gifts to His children. Amen. And He will not withhold any good gift from you if you can only trust Him and believe Him and make Him the center of your life. There's no limit to what God will do for you. He'll step down off of His throne for you if you'll believe Him. If you'll take Him at His word. If you'll save Him. If you'll make Him Lord of your life. If you'll make him the most important thing in your life, Amen. that's what he wants. Amen. He won't take second place. Will God will not be second to your wife, second to your husband, second to your kids, to your job. He got to be number one. Amen. And he is not averse to you having all those nice things, more things than you could ever believe of. Thank you couldn't even afford him calls me to come lay him at your, at your feet. That's the truth. I'm telling you what God can do. Amen. We've seen it over and over and over. God do those things. Praise the Lord. Remember one time in days he was saving up for a car. He had to have a car. No one ever drove his old jumps and stuff, you know. We had to have a car. We had a death in the in the church. They didn't have no insurance and didn't have no money. So we took that car money and we'd give them a funeral. Yeah. And let me tell you what God did for us. He gave us a car. <laughs> you can't outgive God. I'll tell you that right now. You cannot outgive God. It's impossible. And I remember one time reading the scripture. And I was in low state this time and I wasn't in very good condition. But I read the scripture. Amen. Try me and see, he said, if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing such as your soul cannot contain. 
And then the Lord spoke this to me as I read that, and the, and the, and the realness of it hit me. The fullness of what that was saying hit me, and the knowledge came of the Word of God. Uh, revelation came, and it was opened up to me, and I saw that. And then God spoke to me and said, They that have tried have seen, and they that have never tried will never see. All right. You can't make anybody do anything. I'll tell you, when God shows you, it'll open your eyes. Amen. It'll cause you to understand. Amen to God. To receive of God, you got to give it away. And you give it out here, and He'll give it back here, here, and here. I believe the Bible said you give it out one way, and God will give it back seven ways. Amen. Right. <laughs> Amen. It's impossible. It's kind of a selfish thing. You just keep giving because you know you're going to keep giving it back. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Amen. So in a lot of ways, we're like these dry bones many times. We're dry, but when the Word comes forth, it speaks life into us. I tried. Amen. And many times I've went to church and thought I was, wasn't receiving anything. And later on in prayer or in reading the Bible, or maybe even reading the same Scriptures, it began to open up to me and say, wow, I see what that was saying now. I understand what that was about. And He'll speak a lot to your soul. Children, He hasn't brought us out here in the wilderness to die. That's right. No, He sure hasn't. I preached a sermon here many years ago. He's called us out. Now He's trying to call us in. He called us out of the world. He called us out of sin. Now He's trying to call us into His kingdom. All right. Amen. Amen. And some of us have gotten in a, in, a, in a measure. We got a small portion of it. Some of us only got a glimpse of it. A vision of it. Amen. But whatsoever you got, He can increase it. He can give yes, you more yeah. and more and more because He's got plenty Thank you, available Lord. for you. Hallelujah. Well, I love you tonight. I hope you heard the voice of God. I hope you saw this in the way that I saw it as I studied upon and read about it. Amen. We are many times those dry bones. Yeah, there's many times we're dry. But we go right on in hell. We push right on. Because the promises of God are true and they're real. And we stand upon them. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. And I love Jesus tonight. Amen. Oh, I love Him. I thank Him for His Word. It's so true and it's so real. Let's stand. Thank Him for this great service tonight.